attempt talking about how amazing this book is. This is The Fortunate Pilgrim by Mario Puzo. So, reading this book is like reading um, a person's life in which it's sort of like hearing a person tell stories from their childhood slash life. And why I say this is because um, this was pretty much a collection of stories that uh, Mario Puso's mother had told him. So, um, Puso always also said that this book gave him the influence to write The Godfather because And Luisa Santa, excuse me, is basically like a, she is like the godmother because, um, you know, Italian came to America and she wanted the best for her children and she, she got the best for it, but she sadly uh, suffered from a uh, great tragedy while doing it. Um, I mean, she wasn't like mafia affiliated or anything, but uh, one of her children was. So, um, speaking of her children, um, There's this one part of the book that I always think about. Um, it, it's when um, the character, I'm not gonna say who, because I don't wanna spoil anything, is um, making his routes, you know, because he has to collect. And um, he says to, I believe, a. A bakery owner you're no longer part of the union and this guy says I was never a part of your union I shit on your union and um, the character explains that I've been paying for your collections um, I don't want to keep paying for your collections and the character gets hysterical and, uh, let's just say, it doesn't end well for the baker. But I just feel like this book could be a movie because, um, from beginning to end, it's so easy to visualize what the author is talking about because Puso writes in such beautiful sentences, he makes light bulbs on streets sound beautiful. Like he says something like, I believe on a summer's night, uh, Gino was coming home, looking at the naked, white naked bulbs that surrounded him on the street lights, you know, just, Making the most mundane thing sound pretty. What also I like about this book is um, how the mother is very, very strict and she values that her children are in America and uh, they will have this more grand life where she was in Italy working on the farmlands, but they will have to pay their dues. They will have to uh, 
work for it. Like, there's this one part in the book where one of her children go out without telling her. And um, when he comes back, uh, doesn't end well for him. Well, it doesn't end well for him. I mean, he, he just gets smacked around, you know, and uh, the mother's like, you son of a bitch, I told you not to go out. Who do you think you are? And, um, you know, he, he has to say he's sorry, and he does, and, uh, anyway. Also, I'd like to talk about when, um, I believe it was Octavia was talking about how much she wants to be a teacher, and... Lucia Santa says, oh, I want to be a teacher. And he, I meant to say that like that because she is mocking her daughter. And then in Italian, she says, thank God you are alive. That That's a much better um, um, explanation of what I was saying earlier. Uh, saying that um, her children like are in America now. Like they need to just focus on uh the come up if you want to look at it that way you know like like uh with, with great privilege comes great responsibility also uh i don't believe that this is fake at all like these must have been things that puso or puso's mother scenes because there's also um just, there, there's this part in the book where, um, I, I think friends of the Corbos, um, or no, uh, friends of, uh, Angelosi Corbo, fuck, I always forget, uh, okay, let me just start over. So, th there's this part where, Guests are at Lucia Santa's house, okay, and they are playing cards with um, two of Lucia Santa's children, and the guests say, oh, we can't play cards, that's a sin, and, um, and uh, Lucia Santa's children say, just, just, uh, just don't tell your parents. It's cool, man. And, um, but I don't remember how, but I think they find out. And, um, Puso writes about it. Like, like these children are so, like, innocent and afraid that their parents are going to find out that they're playing cards. You know, like, I don't normally read things like that. And that's kind of sweet, you know? That's pretty heartfelt. Um, the character who um, is in the Mafia is extremely intimidating. Uh, uh, his boss says he got arms like a gorilla and um, he smokes cigarettes a lot and he drinks coffee a lot. And um, so, yeah, that's a pretty intimidating guy, right? Also, uh... Just... <laughs> when things are meant to be so serious, not just with this book, but with anything, like, it's those little moments where something can be extremely funny. Like... Uh, when one of her children go to buy a very inexpensive prostitute, um, when he wants to, uh, I think, take his shirt off, the prostitute says, for Christ's sakes, kid, I don't have all night. <laughs> um, and, uh...
There's just so many, like, beautiful stories in this book. Like, her children also like to steal um, lemon ice or Italian ice. Uh, He's, Puso is extremely good at describing what characters look like also. Um, going back to being very descriptive, just for being descriptive, there's a part where uh, Lucia Santa is thinking, if I didn't buy meat so often, I've had more money for my children. And, um, I, I think while she's pondering this thought, uh, one of her sons is sitting on her lap, and for, and Puso gets very descriptive about Lucia Santa's knees. See, like, I remember that from this book, and, um... When, when characters uh, let their emotions get the best of them, it's also very, uh, it's also very powerful too. Um, yeah, like, like I said, like the plans that this family made like happen, but it's through uh, a lot of sadness and um, perseverance. Uh, there's this like really beautiful part where one of one of the shot children um, finally all, all I'm gonna say is that he sort of steps up and um, finally realizes how important family is because um, I'm not gonna say why because it, it it'd be a very big spoiler but. He is at an event where no one wanted to be, and he is giving strangers and people he knows uh, greetings, but he doesn't normally do this, and he, while he's doing this, that's when he realizes, oh, um, maybe I should not have uh, stole, st stealing, stole, <laughs> sorry, stole ice from the railroad because now I am greeting people at a place that I don't want to be and no one wants to be. Um, also going back to Steel and Ice, because that's, for whatever reason, uh, kids like to do that back in uh, Hell Street in New York and back in the day. And I believe it was, uh, the, yeah, the, the son was being chased by a police, no, 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 they called him the bull, and he was able to make his escape by a story he read by a bird. I, I just think that's super interesting that, um, a child is, was capable of running from a bull, from hearing a story, well, to be more specific, it was about a mother bird or something. Um, this, this book just, it really reminds me a lot of, uh, stories that I heard from my grandfather when he was growing up in the Great Depression. Um, he lived in uh, Rhode Island, so 
not as much mafia as New York, but uh, I, d I definitely heard the stories like back in the day um, about that and the games that he played for entertainment when he was growing up as a child in the Great Depression are a lot like, uh, remind me a lot of this book too. And, um, basically to state my final thoughts, um, if you're a fan of The Godfather, you gotta read this book. You gotta check it out. It's, every time I, I go to read it, I read like 10 to 15 pages of it just because it is that good. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a phenomenal novel that really likes to be descriptive, especially about food, you know, combinations that were said in this book are, you know, wine and walnuts and, uh, the heavenly ravioli that, uh, someone made, I can't remember who, uh, like sausage veal, uh, peppers, you know, just, it's magnifical, you know, uh, yeah, uh, The Fortunate Pilgrim by Mario Puso, a phenomenal, excellent read.